Hey guys, it's me, RK Trauma here, and this is going to be the beginning of a series in which I explain how to make breakcore and renoise. Now, this first video is going to just serve as a quick introductory to like the actual like the way the door is used and no, well, not really how it's used, but the UI and explain pretty basic principles so if you know the basics of renoise maybe skip this video um it's not going to be too in depth it's just going to be a quick run through on the basics of how renoise operates and what renoise is so to begin with renoise is a tracker and what a tracker means is it's very sample based, you load in your samples and you edit your samples, but of course you can use instruments, you can add anything you want, but it's more about placing the notes manually and trying to figure out how trackers work is different from an usual timeline based door where um, like FL Studio or Ableton, when you play a track for example, it will go from left to right as you play it, whereas in Real Noise, it goes from top to bottom. As you see, I've hit play. We are playing the first pattern on the Renoise um, default page. So, to start with, let's just bring this back to the top. Let's explain the UI. Like, how how, how does Renoise work? You know, what, what are we looking at? You know, <laughs> like, this shit is diabolical to a lot of people, but honestly, it's not that hard. Once you understand the very basics of how Renoise looks, it's very easy to realize how it works. So to start with, we're going to look at these boxes. So you see here we have track 1, track 2, track 3, track 4, etc. These are your tracks. So what that means is you can put in effects in each column as the Renoise, um, the way a tracker works, it goes downwards not sideways like FL or Ableton like I explained earlier so each track um, you can put different effects on and really you want to be categorizing your sounds in each one of these and depending on what effects you put in each track that will be different for each one on how each sample will be placed in there so what I mean is so let's say for this track one you put in a lot of distortion um, for a kick, let's say you're gonna have a hard kick, it's got distortion and you want it to be loud and nasty. But if you put in a break in that, for example, it's, the break's gonna sound really crazy and wild. But maybe you don't want that, maybe you want like a clean break. So, really, all it is is you want to be categorizing down um, your tracks. So, if I hit, for example, the Q key, if I go to the top here and hit record and I hit Q, you can see I've placed a note. This is a regular C sharp, uh, a regular C note, uh, just C, but then on my keyboard, if I go to, from the letter Q to 2, it will go C sharp, and W will be D. Now, the reason why that is, is because this is how it works. I mean, you can plug your keyboard in, but... I go basically off my own keyboard is how I make music and stuff and how I place notes so it this is how it lines up so when I play these notes are getting played as it goes through that's how this is how the interface works this is the uh, pattern editor or not the pattern editor this is where you place your tracks and stuff so if I just delete that so now we can see this is where we place our notes. This is like the drawing board or the canvas, if you're an, an artist, for example. So you might have noticed it says 64 up here, and that just means the current pattern length in lines. So we each bar, we have 64 possible inputs we can put in to the tracker. Now, if you've noticed, this is just repeating. Every time it goes to 64, it goes back. And that's because we only have one pattern. And the way we see that we only have one pattern is on the left here. This is 
our pattern editor, I think it's called. Um, this is where we add different patterns and stuff. So, for example, if I hit this plus button, it will add a new pattern to the sequence. So now, whereas before, there was nothing above here, but if we hit it now, we can see the bottom of this track on this pattern, we can see it goes on to the next pattern. So if I hit play, and if we wait for it to go to 64, it will go to the next pattern. So the way you make songs is you make different individual patterns from all these um, notes you place in each slide, and all together that makes a song. And you can tell we've progressed because if I go to the start of our second pattern and we look at the top right where my cursor is, we'll see it says 00011. This is 11 seconds into a song where I'm playing from. And if I take it back to the start, it starts at 3 seconds. Oh no, it starts at 0. I don't know why it said 3 for a second. Because it shouldn't have. But you get my point. You know, it's going up now. So anyway... Now that we get the basics of that, let's talk about how um, how, how do we load music in to Real Noise, for example. You know, what's what, what's what's the um, how do, how do we do that? So, as you'll notice at the bottom, I have a load of files, and some say Breakforce One, which is a break horror artist, or breaks Coco Bryce break beats, Damage Amen pack. These are all sample packs I use. Now if you see here we've got a directory you can just hit this and you can find out where um you can find out where the um where you where you keep your samples and stuff. So once you find your directory put it in there or look through it through these arrows or this button here um you'll find your your, your packs you know what what breaks you want to use. Or if you're making break or that is so now we have a pretty good idea of where to find our music so let's just take for example um let's load in this break beat but it's a pretty good one if we double click this you'll see it comes up at the top here now the reason why that is is this is the sample loader so this is where we find our samples at the bottom here and at the top this is where we place them so, as you might remember now, like previously, where we found our, when we inserted our notes into track one, if we just press the Q button again, we can already hear the notes. So if I take the record off and hold my, if I hold the Q button down, we can hear the break being played. So, if I hold the C key down here, and then let's say we do like we did before. I'll play C sharp and then D. Let's listen to how it sounds. So you might notice if I play it again, pay attention, um, it goes up in pitch. But obviously we can't really make break or only based off pitching up, up and down break beats. But I wanted to show this off because this is how notes work. So, you know, for example, if instead I load, um, let me quickly find one. If I find a stab, for example, um, give me one second. Or if I just load in this real quick. We can see the notes that we're inserting are being played upwards in pitch because we are playing a different note. So I'll quickly go back, put it back to the Amen we want. I'll cut this out. So now you might be thinking, well, how are we going to chop breaks if we can only just play the break as a note? So, which is a good question. So what we'll do now is I'll show you how to change where you want to, um, where where you want to slice, for example, where you want to get your notes off. So if I click this top button, top left button here, it says sampler. While I'm toggled on, 
to the sampler because you can clip multiple of these boxes. If I click the break one and hit sampler, we can see we can see the break being played on the break waveform. Let's say. So if I hold down the Q button. But then if I play a higher note, so let's say if I hit U, or sorry, if I played, if I hit the letter I, that plays a C at a higher octave. So we can see the break being played, or the waveform or the sample being played. So the way we, what we want to do typically is, in uh, break core and stuff, we want to slice this, we want to grab each individual hit. Because if we just tap Q, we can see only this part is being played. And that's because um, we just want to have the kick, for example. We want to isolate the kick away from the... Which is the snare, which is here. So what we'll do now is, um, before we go any further, the recommendation put... This to zero crossing. Um, it's not really important so much now, but it's really beneficial in the future. I think zero zero crossing just gives you a more cleaner cut. So just enable this to zero crossing, put it to snap, and what we want to do is we want to hit this button up here. It looks kind of like a trumpet, <laughs> like with the little lines and stuff, but it's next to the button that says slice. And what it does is it automatically detects the cuts of the break. So instead, if I hit Q now, we can see it's playing this note. So what we need to do is we need to move down an octave because if we look at the bottom here, it's starting here. So whenever you slice, you always, always want to go down to the S key to start. Z will play the entire break or the entire sample, but your S key will instead play the first note of your slice. And from there, if we go to X, we can see the next note plays. And if we hit D, which is a D sharp, or your, your D on your actual laptop keyboard is the D sharp on a, a MIDI keyboard. So just quickly, if I hit S, if I hit D, So now we have these two isolated notes, and you know that's that's kind of a long, a big process. And if we keep going, we can hear each individual slice of the amen. But this is a really important thing as well when you start. If we zoom in by scrolling here. We can see that each cut lands before the hit happens, except this one here. If I just zoom it out, we can see here it's going, it's it's cut in half. And what we can do is we can drag the five up, and we can bring it back. And now we have more closed hats. Um, but the reason I wanted to ex like show this is because you can delete any of these. You can delete any of these. You can move them to wherever you want. You could, you can do whatever you want with them. But I don't think that's even right. <laughs> I think I should move this closer. But you get the point. Um, you can move them and you can arrange them. And if you wanted to import your own slice, you can click this button. And you can mark it for yourself. Except if you want to delete it, you can double click the number at the top and the slice gets deleted. But the reason why it's important to do this kind of thing is because when you do break call and stuff, sometimes notes like this one here, you want to be getting your clean hits in. You want to be making sure everything's quite neat. And a big problem with slicing breaks is that typically Ray noise can do a good job of recognizing a lot of the slices but not all of them so if we go down to here let me find out my keyboard if I hit my uh, 
So if I can tell if it's equals, if it's equals on my keyboard. We can hear the start of a crash playing, but this note here is blocking it. So we can delete these two, and now we have a clean crash. And it's important to learn and how to read waveforms through this method. So you can understand what notes you're going to be inputting when we actually get to slicing breaks. So now that we've got this, um, that's pretty much the basics. Um, you can hit the record button and you can start dropping your notes in. But that will come later. We can do that next video where we actually go through the process of chopping breaks and you know formatting what could be considered break call but before we end the video as this is just a basic you can load other samples in at the same time by just clicking a separate number and if we go to a separate number without sample loaded and we go to the sampler we can see no sample is selected and that's because if we click back here we have a sample loaded um, a last few things to go over the plugin and the MIDI um, here. I wouldn't really dive into too early until you get the basics of breakcore and you want to learn further about music production. But for breakcore, a lot of it's just learning really how to chop breaks at first, and then from then on, learning how to sample and doing just basic things and taking it as it goes. But this tutorial is mainly going to be about how to actually chop breaks and how to do stuff like that so the only other thing i want to show before i end the video is if we go to mix here we can see the volume sliders for each track we can turn it up we can turn it off um just as a quick this is basically where you want to this is what you use to measure all your audio levels and just get a basic gist of it um, and you want to click edit if you want to go back to your main uh, note placing page um, the only other things is uh, play button obviously plays but you can use spacebar stop button you can use spacebar to stop again uh, if you click this repeat button it will repeat an entire phrase or a pattern so when this one ends it will only repeat the top one it won't go to the next one which is good if you just want to keep listening to one bar to see how one one bar feels like so if we take that off record is what you the edit mode which is what you click when you want to actually insert notes and then here you can just kind of press anything um this is your metronome button uh, take that off uh, you want this on when you follow it otherwise it will play without you um, this button here it's basically it's it repeats a certain function it repeats like a certain lines it's good when you're designing kicks because you can put drop a few kicks down and listen to them in a row um, don't worry about the sync for BPM this is where you control it you click it and hold it up or you can double click to put in whatever you want Let's see how fast it goes when you put it to 999 um, LPB is very very important but we will get around to that later it's not really a big deal too much just yet um, octaves um, this is what controls where you're placing your notes on the keyboard so if I go here or if I go to an empty sample or no so I go back to the sample if I go on up an octave Oh. If we go up an octave and hit Q, and then we would go down, we can see the notes change from 3 to 4. And that's because it's based off um, what octave you're playing and where you're hitting the notes on your keyboard, because you only have limited space on your laptop keyboard. And um, that's pretty much it for the first video. This is just the basics of understanding of what we're actually looking at, you know, the... Um, you know what 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 how can we conceptualize what we're looking at um so this is just the basics of it um next video i'm going to go into 
actually formatting breaks as, as very basics, how to build up break rhythms and stuff like that. Nothing too complex. Um, I'll probably show volume and effect commands and stuff, but yeah, um, if you're learning this, don't be too disheartened about Renoise. It's It can be quite complicated at first, and it's hard to be creative at first with it, but it is a very, very fun door, and all my music projects I've ever done have been on Renoise, and it's a really good music software. It's just hard to overcome that first bump, but it's not too difficult to apply yourself to it. It looks complicated, but as I've explained here, it's pretty simple. You know, you, this is where you put your tracks. This is where you add each pattern, each bar, if you will. This is where you load your samplers, AC samples, and that's it, really. That it's it's not too difficult. And other stuff you learn, like here, you can see each individual track, and you can see which one's turned on or which one's turned off, for example. Stuff like that. And, you know, you learn a lot as you go. So, thanks for watching. And, um, yeah, I hope you stick around for part two if you're learning Runeoids. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.